I know about five licks. I just play them like various speeds, you know? Like, you know, I always tell people, you know, I built the career out of five licks. You can too. You know, just start with, you know. 
called such as your basic pentatonic. Which is cool, but then you'd like to start stretching the notes out. It's just simple shit. It's, it's actually not that hard. You know, it's like a guy like Zach Wilde now. He's a pen, pen top master, you know. You know, but I like it. It's the first lick you learn. It's the uh, hardest to master, I find. I don't know. What do you think? Opinions, come on. It's too dark in here. Let's turn some lights on. I can't even see anybody. Yeah, let's get some overheads in there, this rock concert thing, you know. I'm blind as a bat. I need light. I couldn't tell if there was more than, like, fucking ten people here, but it sounded like it. But, um, I'm here to answer all your questions. Whatever it is. I don't know. Stock market? Fucking meaning of life? I don't know. I'll make something up if I don't know it. And I promise you that. I'm fucking... I'm quite the storyteller, you know. I'm, a, I'm an okay guitar player, but I'm a cult of personality, and that goes a long ways. So, fuck it. Hey, let's take some questions. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it's Slayer's last tour. What are your plans after Slayer? What are you going to do? Are you gonna... Uh, new Exodus album. Yeah! You want to hear some? Yeah! No, sorry. It's too far off in the making, you know, the riffs would end up appearing on someone else's album. What if we all give you 10 bucks, we... <laughs> you got it! I've also easily bought. Yeah. What's that? Brain dead? Yeah, I am brain dead. No. Come, come closer, I'm also deaf. I'm blind, deaf, I have bad back, bad knees. And uh, what else is wrong with me? Mentally fucking efficient. Oh, the riff? It's just a rip off of ACDC jailbreak. You know, like a jailbreak, brain dead. You know, like, uh, but you know, I admit it, I should pay royalties to those guys, you know. <laughs> We don't rock it. Yeah. How long have you been using a camper? For a long time. I discovered them because Andy Sneak turned me on to them, and uh, they're fucking amazing. I own like a fucking score of these things now. That's my original one. That's the toaster. Uh, it's awesome. I have my, that's my modded Marshall. My, you know, I have three 1987 modded Marshalls that live in a top secret fucking NASA like climate controlled location and don't ever leave. Actually, I should turn them on. They haven't been plugged in in years. But um, I carry that same profile around on a flash drive in my fucking backpack. You know, it's super awesome. Fucking great piece of technology. I love things. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Rick's like the best musician I've ever played with in my life, you know. I mean, I've watched him play funk bass uh, when we supported the Red Hot Chili Peppers and made Flea stop and look to see who was doing it. You know, that's how good he is. He can fucking play piano. He's not as good of a drummer as he thinks he is, but he can play drums. <laughs> Lee's a better rhythm player. With Lee, I don't have to watch out for flying headstocks coming at my forehead. You know, I mean, Rick Hunel and I, in the, over the years, we have each cut each other open like several times with those pointy ass Jackson headstocks, you know? And you don't see someone come up behind you and he's in this full, we call it like digging the holes and filling the holes. Because we're going to do this bang like it's like a shovel. He's just scooping her. And you walk up behind him and doesn't see you there and just bam, like, you know, I'm getting butterfly stitched, you know, between songs. And I, but uh, I'm one up on him. I think he owes me one still all these years. 
but you know they're both just phenomenal musicians and amazing guitar players and uh yeah, and i'm i'm lucky to to play with them both you know it's pretty awesome dudes yeah good question speaking of rick um on blood and blood out obviously you had kirk hammett do the solo and uh, salt balloon. What's the possibility of maybe a guest appearance by Rick? Uh, pretty much a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah that, unless some fucking crazy act of nature like the fucking Yellowstone Park volcano goes off and, and fucking drowns us all in lava. Yeah, Rick will be on the next album for sure. The H team back together, man. What's, What's that? that? Gotta get the H team back together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's still one of my dearest friends, and I love him to death. And, uh, and uh, he's just a spectacular individual. Did you do a tour of John Five? What's that? I'm sorry. What'd you do a tour of John Five? Uh, with Exodus and John Five? It's kind of odd, Bill. I mean, you know, I'll tour with John Five and just walk around and like chop his fruit and vegetables for him just to watch, just so I can watch him play every day. You know. Um, I mean, it's like fucking deli tray tech, you know, meatless, of course, you know. Those vegans have to stick together, you know. Um, well, he's been at it a lot longer than I have. He's actually a really good friend of mine and one of the greatest fucking guitar players to ever walk the earth. And that's the end result of a guy dedicated to, like, playing guitar 24 hours a day, just about. And, uh, you know, I look at him and I start to feel depressed. Maybe I should have, like, played guitar more often instead of all those years of like pumping myself full of fucking alcohol and substances. <laughs> you know, um, I could be that good too. But I mean, he, he can play anything. You know, he's like one of the baddest bluegrass guitar players I've ever seen. And you know, you give him anything, he'll fucking shred on it. It's just crazy. And he's the most humble guy in the world. I tell him that he has every right to have an ego and be a dickhead. You know, like I would totally accept it. He's that good. You know, like you could fucking tell me to fuck off. But he's fucking just a wonderful, warm, open, real human being. He's awesome. Yeah, so everybody's all tongue tied. <laughs> yeah. This goes to your writing. Um, do you get frustrated when you write your music? And if, when you do, how do you get through the frustrations? I don't really get frustrated. You know, I mean, I'm not blowing my own horn, but when it comes to like, uh, Riffs, I never have a problem writing riffs. I probably like pass on like some of my best ones because I get bored really quickly. And like, like right now on my phone, I've got like, I couldn't even tell you how many riffs in the next album. And some of the best shit goes unused because I write something else and I just move on from it. You know, and I'm too lazy to sit and listen to fucking all these riffs where I just, I come up with something and I throw the phone on, on the floor in front of the little frac stamp to capture it. Yeah, lyrics are frustrating. Because, you know, I want to say something, you know, you have to make a point, and, you know, and it gets hard after all these years to write some new ways of killing people and shit. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, fuck, you know, I got to come up with some creative fucking terminology here. Um, you, know, and, you know, it's kind of a crutch to just fall back on, like, you know, the bottom of my blood style, which is awesome, but, you know, I, I try to, like, have a little something more to say now. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll stare at a piece, blank piece of paper for fucking hours, for days. And then you get, because it's all about the first line. And you get the first line done, and then kind of the rest just starts, like, you know, a snowball effect just starts falling. But um, it can be frustrating as fuck. I got like five million song titles, and half the time I don't know what any of them are going to be about. You know? It just sounds cool, you know? I got those in my phone, tons of notes. And shit, I got funny shit in my phone I can't show any. <laughs> Only my wife knows. Just fucking really ridiculous sense of humor, and I'll write shit down for like my imaginary punk band. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit like that. Hipster band names. I got a whole page of those. You know, some of them are really funny. My wife comes up with the best ones. It's fucking really good. Yeah, you. Who's the best piece of advice? Anybody Advice for a guitar player? Life, never live on regret. You know, it's like uh, people have come up to me and like, oh, do you regret this or that? And, you know, and um, regret's a waste of time. You know, everything in life is like a lesson learned. And uh, it's just all about whether you take those lessons and uh, put them to good use. You know, but I don't look backward, I look forward. You know, 
I'm 54 and I feel I'm in the prime of my life. Why would I worry about what I did when I was 25, you know? I did, I did a lot of shit wrong when I was young, you know? Um, and uh, I just try to be better at everything I do as I get older, you know? Just you try to improve as a person. And uh, you work on that and your guitar playing gets better for some reason, you know? Being an asshole to people doesn't help, you know? Being good to people is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right on. Big hand for this guy. Fuck yeah. All right. All right. Come on. You guys are like quiet. The last couple of clinics, everybody must have been on meth. They wouldn't shut up. All right. There's someone who's been doing meth. He wants to talk. I'm just, I'm just kidding, dude. Trust me. I, I know one when I see one and you're not one. Uh, you know, the, the really odd, funny thing is, like, you know, my first guitar hero, the guy I saw live, and he was, like, 10 feet tall and made me really want to play guitar was Ted Nugent. Yeah! You know, like, I agree with, like, none of his politics at all. I think he's a crazy fucking redneck, draft-dodging dumb fuck who didn't want, to, didn't want to pick up a gun when it really mattered in Vietnam, but he sure wants to pick up one now. But... Let me say this, there's so much d division in this world today, and I see people like, they'll state a political opinion and, and people will, fl uh, com you know, they'll comment back like, I'm burning all of his records, fuck that dude. You know what, you want double life gonzo from me, you gotta pry it out of my cold dead fingers. You know, cause I don't care about what he does on that. I still love the music, you know, um, Tom or Ryan us, and myself used to jam on like fucking free for all and shit all the time at Soundcheck and we'd do like these 15 minute long epic versions of Stranglehold and he's still fucking one of my heroes and you know and I agree with some of the stuff he says you know I know he's just it's you know his career now is made on what he said that's where he's putting the money in his pocket but um I love Ted he's fucking badass you know um, my favorite guitar player is Richie Blackmore and my second favorite or first favorite, depending on my mood, is Michael Schenker. You know, um, and uh, you know, I still, if I had to go to a desert island, you know, you don't even have to give me an album; just give me a Stargazer and by Rainbow, and I'm cool. I'll listen to that till they find me or don't find me. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, you in the back. The guy with the tattoo that says my name is his chest and he made me sign it. I feel really weird. Yeah. So you mentioned that you knew what happened to Bill Bonnet. Say that again? John Bonnet. Oh, what about it? Where the body is? Who did it? Who did it? The brother. The brother did it. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> I said I'll either get, you know who did it? The Zodiac Killer. Ted Cruz. <laughs> He's also responsible for John Bonet. This is true. Write it down. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, yeah. Personal feelings on Stephanie spot. You know, it was uh, one of those things that it was supposed to be just a short term thing, you know. Uh, I happen to be planning, at least, to take a little chunk of time off from the road and stay home and recharge and um, write new Exodus and relax and spend some time at home with my family. And, uh, and it didn't work out that way. You know, it, a month turned into several and then we lost Jeff, you know, and now it's going on eight years, you know. Um, I just try to... I try to like do him justice, you know, um, but I do my own thing, you know, you get some critics out there like he doesn't play Jeff's solos, well I don't think anybody can play Jeff's solos but Jeff, you know, 
I mean, there's guys in tribute bands that can nail this shit for no for no. You know, Jeff's really weird, bizarre style. But if that's what you want, you should get a guitar player from a tribute band, you know? And the band's given me my freedom to be me. And I try to, like, you know, pay homage to Jeff wherever possible. And, uh, and you know, he's, he's always there, always omnipresent, you know, on stage with the band. And, um, you know, I got to share his last performance with him, you know, at Indio, the big four. And it was fucking one of those moving, amazing experiences you'll never forget. Yes? What's the possibility of getting Dukes on guest vocals in the future? Probably happen. Yeah? You know, yeah. I mean, I'd like to do another problem with, uh, project with Rob. You know, we talk all the time, and uh, he's a fucking great singer and great guy, and uh, one of these days we'll do something together for sure. Yep. Um, I'm a young musician and was trying to band, trying to keep the spirit of Crash going and everything. Uh, what advice would you have for us younger guys that are in bands trying to get out there and make something to take you know, serious? Well, it's, it's, it's hard nowadays. Um, you know, the musical climate's different, you know. Um, I just say, just do what makes you happy. You know, like when I write a song, I don't write it for you guys and don't take that wrong. You know, I write it for myself. I'm still a fan. You know, I don't mean that like I'm a fan of myself. I'm so killer. I'm a fan of fucking heavy metal. I'm a fan of crunchy ass fucking guitars, you know, and, and high speed drums and fucking screaming vocals. I like the shit. It fucking excites me still. And um, just do what excites you. It makes you happy and uh, work on it. Practice, you know, like. When I was young, you know, in the early days of Exodus, you know, we rehearsed fucking six days a week. I have not been to a Slayer rehearsal in years. <laughs> I, I practice the songs at home. You know, Carrie will send me shit. If it's something new, I just tell him to give me enough time to where I can familiarize myself with it. And, uh, you know, he trusts that I'll show up prepared. But, yeah, it's like, I'm too lazy. I'd rather rehearse in my living room with headphones on than travel away from my family at home, you know. But I don't recommend it for everyone. Practice. Don't listen to me. This is what I said at first. Practice six days a week. Don't, don't be lazy like this one. All right? Yeah. What's your favorite band out there right now? Like new band? New band? Yeah, I mean, sometimes when I, I get asked that question and I say new band, they're not really new. You know, you know like, like, I'll joke around with Tony from Municipal Waste and tell him, you know, you guys aren't a new thrash man. You guys are old, grizzled old fucks too now, you know? <laughs> um, you know, Lost Society from Finland are super killer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, some of my favorite stuff would, like, surprise you. I love Behemoth, you know, they're fucking badass. They just bring it every fucking night. You know, but, I mean, I listen to a lot of weird shit. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of non-metal shit. I'm like the least metal metal dude you ever seen most of the time. You saw what was in my phone right now. Some fucking Terrence Trent Darby, Lisa Stansfield, everything but the girl. All kinds of great, awful to you, probably pop music. Unless you're like fucking mind is open like mine. You know, I love that shit, you know. But um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff out there now. <laughs> If I could yeah. pick, like, yeah, what's any non metal band? Oh, God. Well, I mean, he's no longer with us, but that'd be Prince. But, you know, I, I don't. Yeah. My level of musicianship isn't up to, the, up to his standards, I'm certain. You know, um, yeah, he's my hero. You know, I fucking mourn his loss every day. He's the greatest musician there ever was or ever will be. There'll never be another one like him. Uh, enjoy it, because we'll never see another guy like that, ever. I mean, not in my lifetime. What's that? I brought some pics for y'all. I mean, I hope I have enough. I don't know, but I do have a bag of pics. My guitar tech, before I had to leave, uh, gave them to me. And at first, I thought he was holding a bag of weed, <laughs> which I thought was odd because I don't smoke weed. He smokes lots of weed. Uh, I thought maybe one of the nice people from the In Stuff Music like gave him a bag of some herb or something. He goes, and here's some pics for everybody, and I got a cut, you know. So. Because he's going to hang out with some friends today, so I let him off the hook. <laughs>
getting off there. Yeah. When you're playing, what happens to me when I play? I play every day. I have arthritis. How do you keep your arthritis from setting in? Or I, as setting, how do you keep it loose? I have arthritis. You know, um, I have prescription creams that I, for my knuckles, you know, Voltaire and gel and shit. But, and I'm not trying to tell everybody what to eat. Since I went vegan, my arthritis is gone. Like, you know, like, especially my pick holding finger. Like, I, like last year, I do tours and like that thing would hurt so much, you know, cause I'm playing fucking 50 million notes a night. And it would just fucking hurt. I could barely hang on to the pick sometimes. These knuckles, like you couldn't knock on a door, you know, like you fucking hurt just in contact with them. And uh, my shit's gone infinitely better. So, you know, there you go. Stop eating meat. <laughs> It worked for me, you know, fucking, it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. Do you have any crazy dime bag stories? Not really, you know, we just hung out a lot and just talked guitar and shit. I mean, we got real fucked up lots of times, <laughs> but um, that's why I don't remember them. <laughs> you know, because we were fucking ham. That's back when I used to get hammered. Yeah. What's your uh, practice rig at home? Uh, I got a few different, I have one of those little Marshall codes, which are like super awesome once you like fuck around with the little Bluetooth app and stuff. But mostly I, that's it right there, the Kemper, you know. I have it and uh, I have one of these Moore Audio Baby Bomb power amps. It's like fits in your front pocket and it's 30 watts and it'll drive a 412 cap. And I use that with the Kemper and I also use the Moore like micro preamps. They're fucking amazing. And uh, Technology shit fits in your pocket and sounds exactly like the brown sound sounds exactly like an EVH head. It's fucking amazing. It's great shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's the coolest place you played internationally? I'm sorry? What's the coolest place you played internationally? Internationally? Um, my favorite place to go is Japan. I love traveling to Japan, just the culture and the, the level of perfection they, they achieve and everything. The best audience is fucking South America. You know, I'm sorry, Americans. Until you're starting to light road flares in the middle of the pit at every fucking show. And I mean every fucking show. You haven't seen anything. They're fucking nuts. But, you know, you can't go out and leave the hotel because they'll fucking kill you. But they're fucking rad. I love them. Yeah. Make sense. You're right there, buddy. <laughs> What's that? Your favorite riff to play. Uh, favorite riff to play. Uh, God, I don't know. That's like asking which is my favorite kid. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, like I love playing Strike of the Beast. You know. And I love. fucking good. There's all kinds of good riffs. I like playing other people's riffs, you know. Um, I like that angel of death. I like the angel witch angel of death. Yeah, there's a million of them. I like riffs. Riffs are good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the first riff I ever learned. The first song I ever played with Exodus was a Judas Priest Grinder. Uh, Kirk handed me a guitar and said, here, why, uh, why don't you play Grinder?" And I did it and he goes, you want to join the band? I said, fuck yeah. You know? It's a hard song to play. It's great. <laughs> My first guitar um, was some Montgomery Wards thing. It was a total hunk of shit, but you know, I learned the first chords on it. And then I, I got a Les Paul copy that I bought off Kirk Hammett's brother, but it was part of the infamous Exodus stolen gear heist. And uh, the police took it away when we got busted. You know? We were ghetto kids. We stole equipment. <laughs> Another thing I don't recommend you do. <laughs> but uh, we couldn't afford gear. I didn't steal it. It was. Kirk Hammett and them were the masterminds. I wasn't even in the band yet. They rehearsed in my garage. And uh, my father showed up to this outdoor park that we were playing. And I thought someone in the family had died, you know. And my dad showed up. And he said, son, you gotta come with me. And I went straight down to the Richmond Police Department. 
and uh, you know, explained everything, and they realized I was an innocent pawn in all this until I went home and promptly transported and hid the remaining stolen equipment. <laughs> Which kind of uh, cemented my guilt right then and there, you know. And so, yeah, it is what it is. Live and learn. Yeah. I'm sorry? Um, no, I don't use in ears. I'm loud as fuck. <laughs> With Slayer, I got six calves, three heads, wedges, and side fills going. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. But I got to keep up with the other side, because Carrie has six calves and three heads going. And um, it's just the Slayer way. With Exodus, I run two calves, you know, a stereo 100-watt Marshall power amp and a Kemper, you know. So I got two 100-watt half stacks going, which is plenty fucking loud enough. But, um, yeah, it's, it's overkill. And uh, one of the reasons I probably can't hear anything. <laughs> Yeah. Um, speaking of Slayer, on the, uh, the tour going on now, Pyro is insane. I've been seeing the, the pictures. And, and what's it like to play on stage with Pyro like that? Fucking every kid's dream. <laughs> Come on, you know, like when I wrote my first riff, right? You know, like, all right, I'm sitting in the bedroom at my mom's house. And, yeah, one of these days, <laughs> shit's going to fucking happen. And it just happened. And it's fucking rad. And I, I get close to that shit. I bow to it. I worship it. It's my God. You know, I'm, you know, I'm going to start a church based entirely on pyro. And uh, membership fees are quite reasonable if you'd like to join. Um, but yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's hot as fuck. You know, people are like, say, man, I can feel that shit in the crowd. I'm like, yeah, I get five feet away from it. That's right. I recommend it for everyone. It's fucking awesome. Not just on both sides. You're burning up up there. Uh, you know, professionals fire starters so you like know when not to do it you know there's a good amount of space between them you know like between the fire it looks like fucking overwhelming but you know yeah you know he's kind of at the mercy of professionals that he hope they do their jobs well what's that well some venues we can't have it at all so last night's venue we couldn't have any of the propane-based pyro except for the big dragons that shoot the really thick, fat fucking ones kind of over our heads. But uh, tomorrow night, we got everything, I believe. Yeah! Ha <laughs> 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 Yes? I know you have dollars. Ask Marie. Marie? Yeah. Um, yes. Me too. Um, do they play music? Are they interested? All of my uh, my oldest and the middle one, they play a little guitar and stuff, but they're into different shit, you know, like, my youngest likes, you know, stuff like, you know, of Mice and Man and stuff, and I take her to those shows, and she has a great time, and, um, my middle one and the oldest, uh, well, they all like K-pop, they like the Korean pop and Japanese stuff and anime, they don't listen to what dad does, they couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> but, uh, I don't want them to grow up like me, I was a fucking hooligan as a kid, you know, that, They've never been in trouble, and they're awesome, you know, and I have a granddaughter, and the only boy in the house is my cat. And we thought he was a girl, and so his name's Buffy the Gender Fluid Cat, because I, I still call him her or her him, and he's confused as fuck, you know? But uh, that's, the only, that's the only son I'll ever have, is Buffy. His name's Buffy. Go figure. Yes. 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 Stay home. I'm actually quite a homebody. You know, I, I'd rather wake up and have my granddaughter smiling at me than do about anything else. You know, it's fucking, you know, I cherish that shit. You know, I, at my old house, I had this really spectacular yard, you know, with all these Japanese maples and shit. Too much yard work for a guy who's gone, but I like gardening. Go figure, you know, it's the most metal thing ever. <laughs> you know, when I was home, that shit, my lawn, you could putt off that one. <laughs> and I'm gone, and you know, my wife didn't share my enthusiasm for killing moles and, and doing all that kind of shit you have to do to like keep the yard looking stellar. And uh, so now, you know, that, yeah, that kind of hobby's gone, you know, but you know, I, I don't really do shit. <laughs> I play guitar. I play guitar and hang out with the family. That's about it. Yeah. I gotta ask, can, I, can we get a crazy Bayloff story? Do you got God, there's 40 million Bayloff stories. <laughs> 
I mean, there was a time we went to a show in San Francisco and he was running around with a squirt gun full of his own pee, <laughs> squirting people with it. So, uh, you know, there you go. You, uh, check this out, Barry. He's in the bathroom peeing in a squirt gun. He's like running around. And they're like, hee hee, they think it's water. Like, oh my God. But that was Paul. <laughs> No, there's, I get frustrated with being away from home all the time. You know, I'm 54 years old now, you know, like, and my family has sacrificed everything for me to do this shit. And uh, sometimes, you know, you know, you start hitting that wall on tour and, you know, it's like, you know, you get older, like, yeah, I love being on tour. I just wish they were shorter, you know, like, I know other guys my age, their tours are never over three weeks, but, you know, it's expensive to split tours into two rather than do one. And uh, I love playing on stage. Everything else that comes around with it isn't my favorite thing in the world to do. I get tired of the inside of a hotel room or on, getting on a bus and woken up at four in the morning to go into a hotel only to leave at four in the afternoon. It's fucking tiring shit. You know, um, but when I get on stage, you know, that's the only thing I'm good at. I got no other job skills. You know, fucking, you know I haven't found a way to like make a living based on like fucking, you know, witty repartee. <laughs> I fucking don't know what I'd do. You I'd be fucking, that's go into show. life of crime. You at least have a reality show. Just follow you on Instagram. So oh, me and Chris Adler, <laughs> drum god, <laughs> am a god, we are planning a global entertainment takeover. <laughs> yeah, it's, we, we got some plans. Hopefully, hopefully it becomes more than just two guys having fun and laughing about something you could do for a TV show. But uh, we're gonna work on it here. And uh, maybe that'll be my future, you know, entertainment, television personality. Yeah, we'll see. Who fucking knows? No one would watch it. <laughs> my Nielsen ratings would be shit. Yeah. What's your preference? I know you've done cute shows and tiny shows. I'm sorry? What's your preference? I know you've done cute shows and tiny shows. I like playing when I'm this close to the crowd. You know, I like big shows because, like, say you play an arena, your lead sound, you're getting that natural reverb off the hall, and it's fucking glorious thing when it's right. You know, it's just like, oh, you just feel like a John Sykes or some shit. And uh, but you know, I like seeing people fucking beat each other up right in front of me. It's fucking awesome. You know? <laughs> like your Exodus show is like Fight Club. You know, but uh, everybody's happy. You know, and uh, only thing missing is meatloaf. You know, beating people up with his big man boobs. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like playing clubs. Clubs are chill. Anything else? Or should we get around to like signing all the 500 things you might have brought? Yeah. yeah. How many times a day do your people do the intro to Piranha from the Ultimate Revenge? Um, not that often anymore because most of the people aren't as old as you are. <laughs> it used to be a common occurrence, you know, like. In, Ain't about no goldfish, ain't about no tuna fish, ain't about no trout, you know? But um, I don't hear it that much anymore. I think if I did that live, most people would go, what the fuck's he talking about? <laughs> It'd be one or two of you, I'm sure. Yeah. Do you have like a guitar sitting at home that you don't take out on tour, but it's like showed up on every album you've recorded? It's kind of like your baby, your number one type of thing. <laughs> yeah, I've got several of them. Yeah, I've got some, you know, I, I just recently reacquired my red sticker Jackson from the Toxic Waltz video shoot. Here, who wanted that one? There you go. And, um, and I got some others, you know, I have my Jackson Arch Top, number 21 made, that I use on all the rhythm tracks on Fabulous Disaster, Impact, Force of Habit. That's kind of irreplaceable. The first clinic I did on this tour, I walked out a lot poorer than I walked in because I bought a Les Paul off the owner. It was in his office, wasn't in for sale. Had to have it. It was fucking so badass. But uh, yeah, I got, I'm, I, it's not a bad problem to have. I'm not boasting. I got a lot of fucking guitars. I got too many guitars. I should give some away. <laughs> not that one. Yeah. Uh, come up closer to the old deaf guy. <laughs> come all the way up. Come up. 
just get a chair. Come sit next to me. <laughs> get one of those little horns they used to have. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, it's a process of trial and elimination. You know, I started out like most guys. You know, you saved up your money to get your first Marshall, you know. And then you, like, find the right combination of stomp boxes to overdrive it and get some crunch out of the thing, you know. Then you try other shit. Now the heads they got nowadays are, like, so modern and the gain's already there. You know, you don't have to, like, fuck with them so much. But, um, you know, like, I use Marshall Jubilees with Slayer and their killer. But you do have to put something in the front of them juice them up. But uh, you just try out until you find a sound you like. You know, that makes your playing better. You know, that's the key. And then you'll be there. Fucking be going, oh, I got, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yeah. What's your main grit in front of the Jubilees? Say that again? What's your main ghost or overdrive in front of the uh, Jubilees? Um, I use, it's a prototype for my new uh, Kirk Hammett, David Karen effects the company. It's a uh, it's called the Paranormal Overdrive, and it's a, like basically like a ghoul screamer with a three-band mid parametric in it. It's fucking godlike. It's fucking amazing. Super powerful. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm beating your ears. How's it feel to have your name on a guitar? Pretty awesome. You know, no, it's fucking cool. You know, I, I want. You know, I mean, I kept my guitars really like subtle. You know, I didn't want to put like giant goat heads and upside down crosses. <laughs> on them. I have one with upside down crosses, but, you know, I wanted like a rock dude to look at it and say, I want that guitar, or, you know, or somebody else, not just, you know, your local black metal, thrash metal, death metal dude. And so, you know, my name's only on the back, up on the back of the headstock, you know, like, kind of old English tattoo banner, and that's it. And, uh, but yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. I like it. You know, it's built to my specs, so, you know, it's like, it's the guitar I always wanted, you know, it's fucking rad. Yeah. Where'd you get the idea to have a guitar painted in your own blood? Say it again? Where'd you get the idea to have a guitar painted with your blood? Um, I was introduced to Vincent Castiglia by a good friend of mine, Brian Werner, the singer for Vital Remains. And uh, we met and we just came up with this idea, you know, so I, ESP was totally on board and, um, and I had one made, but just rather than paint it, they just sent it with a white primer. And it was a trial and error. Vincent had to find this, uh, stuff to coat it with so the blood would absorb and wouldn't just smear as he like added additional layers, you know, just, just like loosen up what was already there. And uh, he pulled 18 vials of blood out of me and, and I got a guitar, it was fucking rad. He wanted 32, but my wife said, fuck that, that's enough blood for one day. Because <laughs> I had a show the next day and she was like, that's enough, you know, he's got this tray of vials of blood. But, but it was enough, it turned out just enough and, I didn't have to find a way to like mail some of my blood to New York City. <laughs> Luckily. All right, one more. Who's got some? Give me a fucking Tom Dana. <laughs> you, yeah. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life? <laughs> have a good time all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, thank you for coming out. You guys are fucking awesome. Hold on, I gotta get a selfie.